okay so here again i will not calculate short circuit gmro because we know small signal is not going to change uh, our main motivation to come to folded cascode was we saw if i put my telescopic cascode in unity feedback my output swings were very small so let's verify if, uh, here we have actually improved right let's do that and wrap up for that let's calculate the uh, input common mode and output li limits so help me compute it so this is vicm so what is the lower limit on vicm if i keep reducing this which transistor goes out of saturation if i reduce the gate voltage which goes out of saturation m0 so again vicm is basically the vgs plus vds so what is the minimum vicm vgs of m2 at a current i0 by 2 plus overdrive of m0 at a current i0 it is the same thing as your five transistor ota as well as your telescopic cascode because this part has still remained the same this is your core circuit which is taking the voltage converting it to a current that has not changed so lower limit will not change let's look at the upper limit i am increasing the gate voltage here which transistor can go out of saturation the gate voltage here is increasing what can go out of saturation m9 why i mean this is a gate voltage m9 is here poor m9 i mean the gate voltage for nmos transistor is increasing so is it good or bad good good bad huh? yeah for nmos transistor drain should be at a much higher potential than gate so if gate is increasing that is not a great news so uh, these guys can go out of saturation what is the maximum the gate can go to one threshold above one threshold above drain is a max gate so let me write it it is i'll call this this is vd1 this is vd2 so this is vd2 plus one threshold voltage again this is it now your job is to find what is determining vd2 what is fixing the voltage here look at this voltage this is the drain voltage of let us say m2 but also source of yeah m3 i mean this 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 is the source voltage of m4 also so which means how do you think this source voltage of the transistor is getting set yeah remember the current flowing through this transistor is how much i1 if the current is fixed the source to gate is fixed so now tell me what is the drain voltage vb4 plus vsd of m4 at a current of i1 okay. so this is basically vsg4 fine so this is the drain voltage plus a threshold voltage is the max the gate can go to. clear this voltage is essentially the source voltage of m4 i am fixing the current through m4 by these two current sources right? because i have i0 by 2 plus i1 flowing here i am squeezing out i0 by 2 here making sure a current of i1 flows again i have a negative feedback here fixing the source voltage to this one okay let's quickly do the output so tell me if output keeps reducing what goes out of saturation the drain voltage of uh, drain voltage of m6 is reducing so m6 goes out of saturation so what is the lowest the drain can drop to one threshold below the gate that's all so i just have to find the gate voltage so let us say this is vg6 minus vth6 what is the gate voltage of m6 vb it's clear right i am applying a bias voltage vb6 so this is going to be let's do the max 
so v out is increasing if this voltage increases what goes out of saturation the drain voltage of m6 is increasing and m4 is increasing so drain voltage increasing is a problem for nmos or pmos pmos so m4 goes out of saturation again for a pmos transistor the maximum drain can go is how much one threshold above the gate easy to remember so this is one threshold above the gate what is the gate voltage of m4 vb4 plus a threshold voltage which is mod vth4 Now you can straight away see here, earlier in my telescopic cascode, my VB4 was determining the upper limit tier and lower limit tier. Whereas here I see uh, VB4 is determining only the upper limit. So I can increase my VB4, no one will have issues. But let us actually confirm it with the same numbers. So uh, let us say once again I have to bias or I am trying to design this so that my output swings are maximum. I want to find the maximum, sorry, minimum voltage V out can take. For this, what should I find first? My V out minimum depends on this fellow. I want to find the absolute minimum this can drop to. I should be finding what? Absolute minimum of VB6. So VB6 is this voltage. right? So if I keep dropping this voltage, what can go wrong? Remember, uh, the gate to source voltage of M6 is fixed, which means if I keep reducing the gate voltage of M6, this potential will start to drop, pushing M8 out of saturation. So let us try to write it directly. Can you help me write it directly? What does the minimum VB6 can go? I mean, remember that my VB6 from KVL, it is sum of this voltage and this voltage. What is this voltage? VGS 6, but that is fixed, right? So that is, let us say VGS 6 at a current of I1. This is 6 by the way. Plus the drain to source here, and that is something can go low. Overdrive of M8 at a current of I. So now let us find the minimum. Uh, v, v out minimum is this voltage minus VTH6 so I have VGS minus VTH so that becomes the overdrive voltage so this is the overdrive of M6 at a current I1 plus overdrive of M8 at a current I1. again you can say see here right V out can drop ideally you want this to go to 0 but you have to maintain two drain to source drops and here I can do because my gate voltage is controllable for me. So I can connect my gate to this minimum value so that the output can go as low as two overdrive voltages of the two transistors. So similarly, let us do VB. I should find max of VB4 or minimum of VB4. Max of VB4, let us do that. VB4 max. Let us look at the circuit. VB4 is this voltage. If I keep increasing, what happens? What goes out of saturation? If I keep increasing it, my source to gate is fixed. So if this increases, this voltage increases. This is the drain voltage for NMOS and PMOS. Drain voltage increasing is a problem for PMOS transistor. So which goes out of saturation? M10. So again, can you help me write uh, this voltage now? So remember, this is my supply VDD. I am looking at this voltage. My KVL says VDD minus this drop minus this drop is VB4. So what is the max VB4 I can have? How much is that? VDD, remember uh, VB4 is VDD minus these two voltage drops. That, that part is clear. 
and this part is fixed we can't do anything so the minimum we can go is so overdrive of m10 at a current of i0 by 2 plus i1 okay minus bsg4 at a current of i1 so which means now uh, if i add i mean my v out matches this vb4 plus a threshold so if i add a vth4 you can it's not difficult to find this will be vdd minus overdrive of m10 minus overdrive of m4 okay. i'm not writing the currents here for simplicity but i mean make sure you write it when you are doing an exam again because i have independent control on this gate voltage i can say my v out can go uh, vdd minus the two overdrive voltages so let's take this result and uh, verify if in unity feedback we get good swings here and then we'll wrap up just a couple of more minutes okay so again the same experiment i'm putting in unity feedback so i'll use the same numbers for a fair comparison so vdd was 1.8 volts all overdrive voltages were 50 millivolts threshold voltages was 450 millivolts so vgs is how much 500 millivolts okay. let's quickly compute uh, here i have two overdrive voltages how much is the sum each overdrive voltage is 50 millivolt so 100 millivolt it's 0.1 volt so here vdd is 1.8 minus 50 milli minus 50 milli Here it is VGS plus overdrive. VGS is 500 millivolts. Overdrive is 50 millivolt. This becomes 0.55. So max is depending on VB4. Let's compute VB4. So uh, let's do VB4. VB4 is the supply 1.8 minus overdrive is 0 0.05 minus VSG is 0 0.5. How much is this? 1.25 so which means uh, this is 1.25 let me write it right 1.25 plus 0.5 plus 0.45 how much is this should be 2.2 volts okay. right so now we can clearly see uh, i have lower limit which is 0 0.1 0 0.55 what is the lower you choose on the higher side I have 2.2 and 1.7 what will you choose so now you see you have a very good sub swings right 1.7 to 0.55 is about 1.15 volt right so if I find V max minus V minimum that is 1.7 minus 0.55 that's about 1.15 volts for a supply of 1.8 volt this is actually much better right so uh, that is one of the main advantages of folded cast code. You can design your folded cast code to have maximum output swings. And if you still put it in unity feedback, the signal swings will be good. So there are two other uh, observations we can make here. See here the minimum output can go is two overdrive voltages. That should also make sense because on the lower side I had basically only two NMOS transistors. Correct. Whereas if I look at my folder, I mean telescopic cast code, yeah, the minimum I have, I, I can have is how much here? I have to maintain three overdrive voltages. So what is having a better uh, swing, telescopic or folder cast code? So let me just uh, you know write the advantages. I'll say good swings in unity feedback that is one thing we observe second is the fact that my output swings are also better okay, because for this circuit we saw i can go as low as two overdrive voltage and third is another interesting observation what can you say about the maximum vicm 
maximum VACM, how much it will compute as 2.2 volt. What is your supply? So that is a very nice feature that your VACM max can actually be greater than your supply. That is if you want your in application, an application where the input common mode has to reach as close to supply as possible, this is the best candidate to, to use. And again remember this is particularly I did this for an NMOS input holder cascode right. By NMOS input I mean the actual differential pair is NMOS. Now you can also make the same circuit by replacing all NMOS with PMOS and PMOS with NMOS that will give me a dual circuit. If I have a PMOS input folder cascode, code, what do you think will be the condition on VACM? Yeah, it is a dual right. Here, here I have VACM max. For a PMOS I should have only, I mean I should have VACM. So here I find it is greater than VDD. For a PMOS what will you find it? Less than? So these are the three main advantages of folded casco. That is, if you put it in unity feedback, you will have very good swings. Second is that the output swings themselves is output swing itself is better. Third, your input common mode can reach as high as VDD for an NMOS input, and it can go uh, as low as zero for a PMOS input. If these three advantages are not required, there is no real motivation to go from telescopic to folded casco. There are some applications, I mean see you are using the IC741 right, you do not care what inputs you apply, you go as high as VDD as low as 0 and all, correct. So if you are selling a commercial Occam, right, there are a lot of applications where your common mode, I mean if I put in a unity feedback, your VACM is same as your actual input you apply here, correct. So which means now I can say that my input can go as low as 0, which is a good thing, right. So again, uh, one last thing, please take it as an exercise and please catch a PMOS input folded cascode yourself. Okay. So please try this on your own. I will not discuss it. I mean you can check the solution online easily, right? But you please take it as an exercise and work out. If you have doubts, let me know. I will help you clarify. But unless you draw the circuit yourself, you will not get the hang of it. Because I am iterating again and again, there is no merit to by hearting or memorizing circuits. Because, I mean, see, I could have just shown the circuit and explained what this does. But that way you might not remember it. But now you hopefully understand the motivation for going from telescopic to folded cascode, how we came from this to that. So, which means if you know the thought process, you should be able to draw this. Okay. Start with the same thing, I mean, just replace NMOS with PMOS and PMOS with NMOS. In fact, I gave the circuit for the 5 transistor OTA uh, with the PMOS input in the problem set. You can take this as a reference. Please try to do it. Uh, yeah, I will not discuss the PMOS input. Uh, 